Oh, yes, and we are live one minute to 8 p.m. Oh, yeah, the elevator music. I got Lori here. Her name is Lori Sterling. We gon' talk money. Finances. Get that daddy dough. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's roll the show intro. Alright everybody, my name is Steve Lucen and welcome to Lucen's Lounge, episode number seven, how to take profit first. I have a very awesome guest today. Her name is Lori Sterling. She is actually part of my team, Team Lucen. I uh, brought her on as the CFO. So that means that we are going to be talking about money, about profit, about finances, I met Lori actually through the Run Like Clockwork program. She was a coach uh, back uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, she has since then moved on, um, is doing her own business consulting. Um, and she is just full of amazing knowledge. And I'm super excited to bring her on. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and just bring her on and start talking about money. What do you guys say, huh? Hi. <laughs> oh, Lori, how you doing? Good to see you. Great. I'm doing well. Nice to see you too. Good to see you. Yeah, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So can you can you just give a quick background on, on who Lori Sterling is? What does she do? You know, why, why should we care? Yeah, um, well, I've been sort of in the finance game oh, for 20 years now. And um, I've actually run my own um, web development business um, when I was living in Australia. I live in the UK now and um, did that for 10 years so I bring a lot of experience from that into your own business so um, mm -hmm, that's, mm -hmm. that's experience I draw on constantly. Um, then I did um, branch out when I moved to the UK into business coaching. I joined the Run Like Clockwork team who are brilliant, check them out if, um, if you're curious and um, I had a bit of a hiatus um, during the pandemic and um, mm. so that was uh, well, we had already met um, during that time with, at the Run Like Clockwork team, but I think I reached out to say hello for your birthday at one point and you were like, hey, what are you doing these days? <laughs> Want to yeah. join the team? Yeah, I totally remember that because you were on my mind even before that. And I'm like, oh, I know I want to reach. I was like playing hoscotch. I was like, do I reach out? Do I reach out? Oh, I don't know when. I don't know when. And then boom, you just hit it. I'm like, oh, it's great. <laughs> you did the you did, you yeah. did the move for me. Perfect Fantastic. timing, I think it was for both of us. Yeah, perfect timing. It was lovely. I mean, I don't even know if your intention was to do business together, but hey, here we are. And, and it's been fantastic. Thank you again for joining my yes. team. Yeah, my pleasure. So yeah. well, one of the concepts that, that, that I've learned actually from the same author of, of Run Like Clockwork, um, Mike Michalowicz, um, is the concept called Profit First. And that is also its own book. Um, we'll, leave a, we'll leave a Profit First link in the chat. Um, I think it's ProfitFirstBook.com. And very, very simple concept. And I just think it's, 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 it has helped me understand how to uh, distribute money properly. Because I know when I first started uh, the, my, my, my freelancer journey or my, my, my business entrepreneur journey, I kept it really, really simple. Every dollar that came in, 
30 cents would go into an account for taxes. Because I remember the first time that I, the first year that I had my business going, um, Uncle Sam just smacked me super hard with a $3,000 tax that I did not have saved up. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I can't let this happen again. That hurt. That on top of my credit cards and all this other stuff. Oh, that was so whack. So, you know, I, I had to educate myself, right? And be like, okay, what, what, what do I have to do here? And, and, and the, s- the simple answer was 30, 30% of everything that you do, just save it in another account, wait yeah. for tax season to come around, give that to Uncle Sam, right? That's and- well, you're a little bit unique in that um, role because a lot of people think, oh, well, I better not make as much next time and then the government won't take so much. And like people have a fear of having to pay tax, but it's actually a good thing in your business. If you're having to pay tax, it means you're profitable. And it's just about how do you manage that obligation that we have in our businesses? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 even even the 30, the 30 like saving 30% was also, I would say overkill. It was it was overcompensating, you know, because it was just to be absolutely safe. Once I learned to do that, it was I love tax time because it's like I, I was be I was disciplined. I did not touch that money. And tax time came around and I always had money left over. And that felt really good, right? That was more profit for me, I would say, right? Yeah. But and, and 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 that's the simple way of of kind of starting off. Cool, that works. But then, um, once you start to just build, bring in more uh, overhead, software, rent, people, resources, um, it, it, it it's a whole nother ball game. Absolutely. So so profit first. I mean, uh, uh, you you practice it as well. I'm assuming, right? I mean, you're, you're the I one definitely kind of do. On. Uh, can can you just layman's terms what what what's what's the basics of profit first definitely so you have you heard of parkinson's law like um that time expands and contracts with the amount of time that we have that that um oh yeah oh i'm very familiar with parkinson's law (laughs) yeah well the thing is parkinson's law works with all resources so money is a resource um even like toothpaste is a resource like when you've got a brand new tube of toothpaste you're generous with how much you use but when you're getting to the end you just use a little bit because um it's how much of that resource we have like we don't chuck a toothpaste um you know out when it's only halfway used we use that entire resource and it's human nature that we do this and so like you said when expenses start building up and business starts growing we're increasing the revenue but then our expenses tend to increase as well and it's because that resource income comes in ex, um, expenses come out and the leftover is profit but we don't run our businesses to have just get the leftovers we're actually running our business to take profit from it and so that is the concept is um without um flipping this this um um like model transaction model around the other way we're actually using all of our resource up before we can take profit from it and so if we use our human nature and flip it in this model where we take profit first and we use in this case like bank balance accounting then um, we're using it to our um to our advantage to it yeah it actually works with our human nature rather than against it It, it, it's absolutely wonderful so uh uh income right you get your income take your profit first and whatever is left that should be towards your expenses exactly and if if you don't have enough to expand your your you know to get that computer that you want or to get to to hire that employee that you want because your expenses is telling you you only have this much then that that forces you to cut costs cut expenses it forces you to constrain it forces you to try and figure something else out um, as right. opposed as opposed to what I, I want to say most business owners do and that's they take they, they, they bring in the income they they pay everything everything out all the expenses and then they're left with a couple pennies a couple dollars uh, as right. profit and then that's that's 
that's not yeah. fair to the business owner who takes so much risk in everything right and and exactly. their time their family time and in the energy and the resources yeah so often entrepreneurs don't pay themselves or don't pay themselves what they're worth and they put themselves last instead of actually the whole reason you started the business in the first place including myself i was always i guess i guess selfless is 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 the word for that right like hey let me make sure everybody else is good let me make sure everybody else gets paid and then yeah like i'm i'm left with a couple pennies and shouldn't be like that right it's not it's not that way so um that's i think that's the overall concept profit first right income take your profit first and then the expenses but there's a there's a nice little model or nice little five account rule right with profit first can you can you put the people on for that laurie yeah so um when all your income goes into one account if you're taking it about out a bit of profit here and expenses here, it still tends to be hard to keep track of what goes into what category. So what we do is we create five accounts so that it's kind of like money is put into like the old envelope system. And mm. it's that money is out of sight, out of mind. You can spend what you have available in that account and the rest of it is going to take care of itself. Mm-hmm. So there's, five accounts is your income account and it's important that the income account is separate from your expenses account key Uh, yes it is um the second account is a profit account so this profit is um money that you pay yourself usually once a quarter that no matter how much income you've made if you've only made a little bit or you've made a lot bit it's based on the percentage of um, income that you've made and you've deserved that that money that comes in so it's a bit of a bonus it's like um distributions from your company you might not be a company but um like being able to uh, distribute that month on it like a bonus on a quarterly basis um that's the basis of that profit rewarding you for the risk that you've taken as an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. the next one is taxes so Depending on what country you're from, um, you might have higher taxes or lower taxes. In the US, it's based around 15%, but you can talk to a profit first professional or an accountant or something to find Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your ideal percentage. By the way, let me just interrupt you. Uh, This is not financial advice. We are doing this for entertainment. Um, Exactly. But but, but, I got to say that, but this is definitely what I follow and and what Lori follow. We're just really speaking from experience. Yeah, that's it. Ha ha. Can't catch me with that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. No, go ahead, go ahead. Um, the next one is owner's pay. So what it would cost to replace you as from an employee, if an employee was to come in and do your job for you, that's how much you would um, pay yourself on a bare bedroom. And then on the very last count is operational expenses. So uh, that is, you know, the running of the business. That's your um, long-term expenses as well as short-term. So if you have annual amounts, you need to prepare for those as well as monthly transactions that come out. Your team that comes out of that amount. Um, Yeah, so that's... Everything else. Everything else. Software, hardware, rent, right? Uh, Human resources. Absolutely wonderful. This, This concept right here was a game changer for me. I ate up the book. I, 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 you know, read the blog articles and I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. And I think because it was a structure to follow, right? When myself personally, I did not go to school for business, right? I went to school for design and animation and technology. They didn't teach me anything about cash flow, right? Of how to distribute money, about taxes. So this gave me a nice little template to use for every dollar that comes in into the income account for every dollar that comes in you know twice a month distribute it to the other four accounts and again that was uh taxes no profit first right uh owner's compensation yeah taxes and then your operational expenses exactly And, and that alone right there having those five accounts fantastic now with the with these five accounts though this is in a bank account that 
uh, 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 allows you, or how should I say this, empowers you to have five accounts. So long story short, I had Chase. Chase did not empower me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, put, I'm putting them on blast. And um, I had to find the bank account that allowed me to get five accounts and not charge me the 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 like a fee for not having enough money in each one because the idea is that for the income account let's say you get a hundred dollars in the income account twice a month you're 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 making that income account go to zero because you're distributing that money to the other four accounts and that 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 part is important and key to understand because a lot of banks um want you to have a balance there now the idea is to always have income coming in right but, you know, right. especially a few years ago when I was still starting off with this concept, I needed to have I wanted to have the five accounts and um, you need to find an, a, a bank that ends up, uh, again, not charging you with the fee or, 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 or making you have like a minimum of five thousand, ten thousand, whatever, whatever their, their restrictions are. Um, and that ended up for me. I, I actually had Banco Popular, which is so funny because that was that was my dad's bank. Um, when he was still around, he was a salesman. Uh, he used to sell uh, Inglés Ahora, which is like Inglés Sin Barreras. So for my Latin folks out there that we probably understand that and have seen that, it's, it's to, learn, to learn English for Spanish people. Um, he's, 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 he sold Spanish English courses door to door um, and bodega to bodega. And I remember he would always go to Banco Popular. Um, but that was a bank that 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 helped the small entrepreneur, um, the small business owner, and that's why I had them for a hot minute, a couple of years. Um, but then they started to increase their rates and fees and restrictions. Um, ended up leaving them, and now I use a- Axel's Bank, which is an internet bank. Um, so far, so good with them. I mean, there 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 there's definitely the ups and downs of having like a mainstream bank and a a internet bank. Um, and, but it, it, that bank has even allowed me to open up, I don't know, like 10 accounts yes. and, and, and not charge me. Right. And, and, and that's like a deeper level of profit first. Like once you master these five accounts, that operational expenses account can be subdivided or sub enveloped yeah. to so many other things, right? Like, like, uh, what, what are some examples that that can well, be? Yeah. We've got a marketing account that is separate. Um, so that we put 10% of our income into marketing. Um, we also have uh, like cost, cost of goods, like a COGS um, account as well. We have a vault where we sort of build up, you know, some people might have noticed over the pandemic that um, cash flow got tight and so they needed to actually draw on their reserves. And so we have an account left there for reserves so that for the longevity of our business that we can rely on that when the market goes up and down. Um, what other accounts do we have? There's a, I, I, <laughs> I, added, I added a VJ account. Yes, you did. My, my passion is VJ. I mean, exhibit A, the stage, and then the after party to this podcast. Um, what, the reason why I added a VJ account was for any VJ gig that I get, I would throw money in there. And then for anything that I wanted to do for VJ, and let's say get another projector or get another piece of software or get another controller, a MIDI controller, um, I would take it from there. I was like, let, let me let me not try and like blow away tons of money, um, even though I did do that. <laughs> but like, let me let me try and control it and 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 uh, uh, figure out uh, have it feed itself so to speak. So, and and it's, it's so nice to have this sort of envelope approach um, to, to money, right? Like, um, uh, and we say envelope, right? Cause I bet like your mom or grandma used to stash away money in in an envelope under the mattress. This was for groceries for the week. (laughs) This was for rent for the, for the month or whatever, you know, and it it works except all of this is just virtual now, right? Cause banks are all virtual and exactly. No one uses cash anymore. No one uses cash anymore. But it's funny. My, my wife says, yo, how do you end up with, with change all the time in your pocket? Um, I guess I'm the only one that still uses some cash to like buy yeah, a, sa- a sandwich at the deli. Yeah. yeah. 
but um yeah so so profit first amazing De- definitely recommend it um uh you, you could start i mean it's that easy right am i missing yeah. are we missing anything to, to to get started with okay. profit first dead easy Just five accounts um the bank that lets you do five accounts i think that was that was a hurdle for me but i kind of gave you some some answers oh like a a a, a, a what is it a federal credit union yeah um, th- those might be helpful i looked into them in new york um community banks community banks mm-hmm. yeah there you go um things of that nature look into your local community bank mm-hmm. they they tend to be like oh you don't have to have you could you could start off your account with 50 bucks in fact i think that's that's what um i'm trying to remember don't quote me on this but i think axos uh, I, I could open an account with like a hundred bucks. Um, if I wanted more, I think I did have to have, a, a, either, either a hundred bucks, 500 bucks or a thousand bucks to, to, to open up those accounts, but I had the bread and I'm like, you know what, this works for me. And this, this ends up, um, um, uh, hit check, uh, hitting the check marks on, on, on the checklist that I, you know, to make it happen. And, and it's been, it's been good. I mean, I don't go to an ATM to take out money when it comes to the business on my personal side, I do, I guess that's where the, the change comes from. So I take the, the money from my personal account and, and, and go buy a sandwich yeah. with cash. Um, but uh, yeah, that ended up working really nicely. I, I absolutely love it. Now, should, should we get deeper than that, Lori? Um, well, you can bring up your diagram that you based your both your personal finances and your business finances off this. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna going we're, the deeper level. We're gonna go we're gonna go deeper. That's if that wasn't <laughs> enough. Yes. Uh, 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 shouts to Yeah Curls. Um, she says so. So it's considered a passion account. Um, I like that. Yeah, it that that VJ account is like a passion account. It's yeah. In fact, in fact, in the book, it says, um, well, I don't know if in the book it says it, but I was considering it as a as a fun account. You know, let me do yeah. something cool with this. And and oh, and here's the thing. I, and, and Lauren, maybe you saw this in our click up. Um, I made a list of 30 accounts that I wanted to, to create. One of them was um, uh, uh, take the team on a vacation account, you know, like like uh, uh, give 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 back to 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 my team members um, like a wish you know, list like a wish list you know uh, yeah. uh hardware uh, uh 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 oh check this out you can have an account i like i like this tip right here you can have an account for a new hire yeah so it's like it's like you're every dollar you come in you put a little percentage into that new hire account and you save oh. up three to six months to nine months to a whole year of that person's salary yeah and so it, you pay into that account the amount you would be paying for that person's salary before you've even hired them that way you can tell if you can afford them and boom. it gives you a bit of a buffer to start off with for you know maybe while you're still training and things like that but yeah the, the income starts increasing so i think i think building building buffers is is what's i hope that we learned you know through the pandemic yeah. Um, you know, to have the three months, six months of, of expenses, whether it's in your personal life and or in your business. And I certainly did it for my business. In fact, what we have right here, right, is the business and personal cash flow um, right. using the profit first model. Um, Lori, what's what's going on here? This this <laughs> diagram kind of looks scary, but it's, uh, it's okay. I actually really, really love it. So I hope everybody else out there loves oh, it good. once you explain it. Yeah, so you can see um, the first one, all income at the top, that is the first account that we already mentioned. And then I'm going to jump down to the other other four accounts, profit, owner's pay, tax, and operating expenses. We spoke about that already. But Mm -hmm. in between there, sometimes our income, especially if you have like a retail business or... um, Um, so merchandise sort of a business something like that then there's costs that go into making that sale so you can't make a sale unless you've occurred those costs it's directly related one to one so the Mm -hmm. income comes in you might have materials or stock um, for that you had the cost that went into that receiving that income 
So then if you take that cost of goods out, then you're left with what is called real revenue. So you can like buy and sell a house, but if you've only, um, like if you were buying and selling a house for, you know, for your business and you bought a million dollar, a $900,000 house and sold it for a million dollars, you have only made a hundred thousand you don't have a million dollar business you have a hundred thousand dollar business so just because you're using bigger numbers doesn't mean oh i get to distribute a million dollars because you've actually only made a hundred thousand in in that um transaction so that's trying to make the difference that not all income is created equal Mm. so you want to have like this real revenue um aspect that is when you you make your distri- distributions from the real revenue amount, not from the income amount, if you have cost of goods. A lot of businesses don't, um, especially if you might be like a services-based business, then um, you might not need that extra category. But I just thought I'd have it in here just in case that that question might pop up for someone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that was that was... That was interesting when 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 you were coaching me, you know, in the run mm. like clockwork side. I saw this. I attended this webinar, mm. and I fell in love. I'm like, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> I wanted to have a deeper understanding of how money should actually flow and work. Um, and I actually took this contractors and materials part. Uh, a lot of my team, actually, all of my team are subcontractors, um, and so I thought that they would they would they would go in here. In fact a good amount of them do because they end up being, um, like you said, a direct one-to-one relationship, uh, uh, hire this contractor only if I have this type of project. So I ended up, um, doing that and then really understanding, oh, wow, my real revenue is really, um, you know, X amount. It's not, it's, it's not the bigger amount that I thought. And then you distribute from there, the, the, the mm-hmm. to the profit, the owner's pay tax and operating expenses, um, yeah, can you go through that line, especially the percentages? That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, so these are the percentages um, recommended in the Profit First book. Um, but then as you like hit higher levels of real revenue, those percentages may change. There, he's got like a table inside the book that you can look up what percentages are ideal. And he, he found those percentages by like um, surveying, I think, a thousand businesses, a thousand profitable, mm. um, healthy businesses to find out what is the general distribution of these, um, these uh, categories. And so he did a lot of research into this side of things. So I, I, and I have found working with people that these are pretty much spot on. Maybe taxes can change depending on what country you're from. But other than that, they're a healthy business. These are very good percentages to start with. But you don't, if your business isn't at these percentages, you don't want to swap overnight because that could break your business. So Mm. you just tweak it one or two percentages at a time until you've, you've moved into this um, this balance between all four categories. So the, yeah, the, the understanding this helped me understand that my business was not profitable, that I was paying myself way too little. Um, my taxes were on point. <laughs> I was paying <laughs> Uncle Sam okay. And, and but then my operating expenses, right? It was just too high, right? It was like, oh, I need to, I need to, I need to distribute the money differently. I need to, um, uh, make it more profitable and and most importantly just cut expenses um and and, and not 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 spend so much yeah. um I'll, I'll i'll throw this to the audience um i've i've learned to use my business to my advantage and and the reason i say that is i have i have two hundred thousand dollars in student loans no, no designer or, or creative should have two hundred thousand dollars in student loans. However, um, I I was able to kind of show a lot of expenses all the time, and and then this was before the profit first model. But I would I would do a lot of expenses, 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 and so Steve Lucen um, would look like he's poor. Um, and then they, then, then the, the, the government would see that, I mean, not the government, the, um, the student loans would see that it was like, oh, okay, he's not making money and he's on an income based repayment plan. 
um, okay, you owe fifty dollars a month as opposed to the 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 four hundred, five hundred, a thousand, two thousand dollars a month that that uh, most get into. So I was able to kind of manipulate that by showing a lot of expenses and and um, figuring that out. Now again, this isn't financial advice. This is what I did personally, um, and. But that's also something that I want to emphasize that you you owning a business, you you, you control uh, 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 the, the, the flow of things. Um, uh, you either fix it or you or you either make it better or you make it worse um, f- on purpose or not. Right. And and I learned that 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 you can do that in America. And it's uh, it's allowed me to 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 keep my student loan payments low. Now, am I paying it off fast? Absolutely not. Because when I did the calculations, even if I threw down like two grand a month, a grand a month, I wouldn't pay it off in 25 years at some point. Right. And I'm like, why even pay towards it? So um, I decided to, you know, I'm going to just pay the bare minimum for 25 years and 25 years they get they get forgiven. So that's a shit ton of time. But um, I think. From here on out, the goal is to just make a shit ton of money and then just pay it off. But um, that's what I was doing. And um, I, if anybody could leave a comment on that, I think I just love to chop it up on that because that's just an interesting approach. Not 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 many people do that. Right. And again, me as the business owner, I just took that risk mm. and I'm taking that risk. Yeah. But the thing is, um, I think a piece of the puzzle that people don't think about is when you're a business owner looking after your long-term future isn't quite the same as if you are an employee, like when it comes to like 401ks and things and um, contributions and things like that, you um, are the one who needs to put away for your future self Mm -hmm. while you're making the income now, um, you know, in your younger age. And so, um, that needs to be a forethought now rather than something I'm going to do when I'm, you know, down the track. And yeah. because your money can work a lot harder for you the young, when you're younger. And so it makes it easy, uh, easier to think about retirement and things like that when you're, when you're older. Yeah. So to that point, um, jump into that owner's pay section. Cause that, yeah. this is the part that I was like, Oh, this is fantastic. I put it into, I put it into play and, Guys, I, I bought a house or a condo um, in, in the suburbs. I, I crushed 30 grand in, in debt, credit card debt or loan debt. Uh, yeah. This was all through the pandemic in two years or, or less than two years. And um, I'm, it, it, this has helped me make money moves, powerful yeah. money moves. Uh, Laurie, Laurie, please. Okay, so once again, it's a similar concept. We have this time we have four bank accounts, and these bank accounts are for our personal finances. Um, one is your um, like your obligations, your bills, and that can be you know your household bills. That can be longer term bills, like if you pay insurances once a year, or um, if you ha- you know want to save up for Christmas and have the money aside in a separate bank account and things like that. Um, you would have like an account that is sort of like a set amount of money goes into their takes care of bills. And you can't touch that because if you pull money out of the bills account, it means you go without electricity sort of thing. Like Mm -hmm. you're going to be robbing Peter to pay Paul. So Mm -hmm. you don't touch that. If you pull out money out of that account, then you won't have money for your bills to pay. So that gets taken care of first. And then we have like a splurge account. This is, you know, our lifestyle. This is when we want to go out and um, eat or we want to buy clothes or um, maybe we want to go to the gym or, you know. To to, to a music festival. Yes, exactly. To a music festival. And so we have like money in that account. And then there's no guilt in being able to spend that money because that's what it's there for. It's our lifestyle. It's there to enjoy. But once you've spent it and the money runs out, that's it. There's no dipping into it. There's no creating a debt on the credit card. It's just once the money's gone that um, there can't be any more and you wait for next payday before it comes back. I think most of us are familiar, but the, the safe part is the bills are taken care of. You don't have to worry about accidentally overspending and not being able to pay the electricity because you've got a separate account for that purpose. 
Mm-hmm. So that, it's super important to have a lifestyle account. And then um, the third account is what I call a smile account, but it's for short-term savings in that you probably can't purchase, you might um, take a bit of effort to save up for um, a purchase, something um, maybe you want to buy a new car or maybe you want to do a house renovation. Then like one life cycle of your pay account isn't going to be enough to purchase that thing. So you need to save up for it. That's a short-term savings account. So mm. something that's going to put a smile on your face. Maybe it's a holiday or maybe it's a vacation. You know, yeah. Yeah, va- yeah, absolutely. Vacation, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Mm. And then um, the fourth one is security. This is long-term savings for your future self. And um, this includes um, making sure that you have a buffer um, to use yourself as the credit card provider instead of paying somebody else interest, you have a buffer there so that if your fridge dies, you can go overnight and buy yourself a new fridge or something without having to put it on credit and have to pay interest for it. So that is fire. Yeah. Fire. I absolutely love that part right there. Mm -hmm. Um, Being your own credit card. That's, that's so empowering to to do and not, not have to depend on another institution to give you money. And then if you don't pay yep. it in that month, they charge yep. you 24% yep. of, Affect of, of your that credit death. rating. Oof, that hurts. Mm. That hurts. Yeah, but, but, and, then, and then you put up here around 20% and then, and then you go ideally. into ideally, right. Of, of yeah. your owner's pay. Yes. So again, it's, it's that envelope system. It's that cash flow system. It's that distributing money. Every penny goes to some, envelope some account for some mm-hmm. reason that's right so nice so nice go deep go 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 to that next level Lori. i, I love this right. one right here i love this one it's i mean i mean Lori. i think you also have to understand everybody else out there um i grew up in projects and i don't know if Lori, if you know what projects are like it's yeah, it's, it's like pub, it's public housing right yeah um you know my mom came to america uh, from ecuador in the 70s mm-hmm. you know she 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 did her thing you know we, we I, yeah. like i said grew up in projects not the not the not the most grungiest and dirtiest and and most uh violent projects is the ones in manhattan um still projects nonetheless yeah. um and I, 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 I vowed at some point, you know, that I'm going to get up on out of here, you know, and, and, and do me, you know, get my education, get my master's, you know, yeah. <laughs> eventually run a business and, and, mm-hmm. and, and do, do, do good for my family, you know, come up and, and understanding money. And again, like, I wish they taught this in fucking elementary school, <laughs> in yes. middle school, yeah. in high school, in college, in your master's program, I wish they oh, taught absolutely. this. Absolutely, you know what yeah. I'm saying. And and I think so many other so so yeah, so many people would be mm. that better off at an earlier stage. I learned this. What was that, Lori? 2018, 2019, right? Yes, um, I that was so, that yeah. was what two three years ago. Yeah. I'm I'm 35, so that was when I was in my early 30s. Uh, like, again, like so. All right, put them put them on, Laurie. I don't mean to be stop. I'm, I'm just I, so so it excites me. It so I was trying to get that. It excites me That's to have this knowledge and share it with my community, um, because this can, especially other business owners out there, this can That's help it. you run an effective business, a profitable business. That's it. Brilliant. All right. So next we move on to debt eradication. Now, not all debts are created equal. So I, you know, a house debt would be different and, and, um, but depending on um, your personal circumstances that getting rid of debt is the next best um, is the next step in this ladder. So trying Mm -hmm. to get rid of maybe that is um your loans uh uh, your student loans for some people um Mm -hmm. depending on your personal income and things like that of course but if you can at least contribute a little bit towards it and get used to paying that amount off one day that debt is going to be off your plate and you don't have to worry about it anymore and you can take that money and pour it into things that are going to benefit your future even better so debt is like past spending uh, whereas we want to use our money for our future spending and um, and so getting rid of that over and above what the minimum payment is if you can take part of that 20 percent, even if you only take 
10% of that money and put it on top extra onto your debt, then you're going to have a snowball effect and it's going to help with interest rates and, and long-term um, debt eradication if you can um, start getting used to yeah, having the mindset of getting rid of that debt. Oh, so, so good. Um, I have a question here from, from, from the, from the chat from Yasmin. Uh, can you use your business to pay off your personal credit cards? Um, I think this is the perfect opportunity and I'm going to, I'm going to say yes. All right, Lori, cause it ends up, it ends up funneling down. That's, that's, that's kind of like what we're okay. showing, right? The all income funnels mm-hmm. down to owner's pay, right? So you're paying yourself that's from the business Mm-hmm. And then from the owner's pay, you are uh, uh, paying off your, your personal debt, right? That's In this right. case, you, debt eradication. That's right. And you could probably even dip into like the 5% towards profit. If as long as your business doesn't have debt, I would, if your business doesn't have debt, then use that to pay off your personal debt, 100%. Yeah. Love it. Uh-huh. Love it. And then, um, yeah, what, let's, let's, uh, yeah, what are the other parts yeah. over here right. for security, so, which is. That's right. So um, then most people like to look into buying a house. Um, it's not for everybody. That's certainly optional. But if buying a house is on your wish list, then here's the point where you start saving up for that deposit. So use the 20% of your income, build up that house deposit to be able to yeah, put down a, um, a down payment on a house and um, get used to, yeah, having that money put aside before like the amount that you would be saving up for that loan, you can eventually use to go into a mortgage um, sort of thing as well. Um, and then after we've got a house deposit, then we look into putting money consistently away for investments. So mm-hmm. the sooner you can start invest- investing, the better your money can work for you long term. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many graphs out there of, you know, as um, a student who um, puts away $2,000, no, $5,000 a year for the first five years of their career compared to if they started five years later and continued to put $5,000 away every year for the rest of their life that first five years will make more money than the, than the last um, that's, like 20, 25 years of their career. That, that is so, I, I didn't know that. And that sounds yeah. amazing. And I absolutely that's, believe it. Yeah. Com- com- compound, compound, uh, what the compound exactly. effect. Yep. Compound. Yeah. Interest compounding. Interest exactly. compounding. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Investments, so, investments include stocks. Uh, yeah. 401k. Yeah. I mean, investments Crypt- are like crypto. Easy. Crypto, I like to use the example, you can buy trees, like you can buy tree seedlings and then in 10 years time, those trees can be used. And like, there's so many different types of investments mm. out there that, uh, yes, definitely go and see a financial planner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then we got increased buffer, three plus that's, months living expenses. That's so right. that, that's cool too. Cause it's like, okay, you get the thousand dollar buffer first mm-hmm. and then you know what? Okay. We got, we got debt eradication. We got the house deposit investments increase that to three months and i think this is so important especially because of the pandemic right it's like yo everybody yo my wife started doing this and and awesome right like because now now she's not scared that you know another pandemic is going to happen that we'll be able to survive um you know off of off of uh off of this this little account right here yeah and if you do change jobs it can quite often take you know, up to three months to, you know, find yourself a new job or something. That's right. Mm. Or if you're trying to start a new business, then that you've at least got three months worth of income that you um, can rely on while that business is getting up and running and Mm -hmm. all many reasons to have that that buffer. Yeah. Um, Yep. The final one is mortgage eradication. So you're at a really comfortable point in life. You've got a house, you've you've, uh, got investments, you've got a good buffer now let's concentrate on getting rid of that mortgage because Mm -hmm. what happens if you don't have mortgage to be able to pay anymore you can like chill and take it easy Mm -hmm. and actually enjoy Mm -hmm. life and uh, and not have that so much pressure so if you can get that pressure off your back sooner Mm -hmm. then yeah then it's gonna give you the opportunity to be able to retire early if that, that or you know 
go and pursue things in life that are meaningful to you rather than worry about having to stick into a job just for this reason for security brilliant brilliant there's the, i do see a last one here seven legacy retirement yeah. um uh, uh, so this is a uh, different than the 401k this is more for uh leaving or i mean depending on how you use it right the legacy mm -hmm. I, I see that as leaving money for your children right it could or, be yeah it could be like um paying for your children's education and things like that it could also uh, go into mm -hmm. maybe you want to reduce how often you work and you want to work for a not-for-profit and so mm -hmm. it's like passion projects and things mm -hmm. like that and I, thank you so yeah no, I, with, with this right a uh, part of my envelope is um saving for my daughter's uh future right yeah. the, the the goal is to give her when she turns 25 to give her hundred thousand dollars um so that she could just either start a business have a down payment to something um, and I'm also doing that for my goddaughter, not as much as half actually, but still, you know, like, uh, be able to hold her down if she ends up loving me, she really does not like me now, but that's another story. Um, and, um, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's so great again, like just distributing this money virtually, um, it's helped me, um, uh, eradicate, like I said, 30 grand in, in, in debt. Um, and it's allowed me to buy a home in, in the suburbs of New York city. Um, and Laurie, I just can't thank you enough for, for, uh, putting me on to this. This was such a great, uh, 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 tool conversation, uh, structure template. It was, uh, again, just, I'm yeah. in, indebted to you <laughs> speaking but, of that. Yeah. It's not me. I promise. <laughs> But it's um fantastic. Uh this has been wonderful. Thank you so yeah. much for 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 coming My on. Pleasure. I mean, we we could probably get even deeper now. Oh, I got a I got a question from Vanellope Cruz. Where is Lori based out of? Ah, uh, normally in the UK, but right as we speak, I'm actually in Australia visiting my family. So oh yeah, normally the UK. There you go. That's that's where you where you hear that brilliant accent. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. It's very really refreshing. It's um Cool. So any parting words? Where can, where can people find you um, if they wanted to connect with you? Yeah. Um, oh, I like hanging around on Instagram at laurie.sterling. That's a pretty easy one. Um, or, yeah, lauriesterling.com if you want to reach out uh, and contact me too. You can do that there. Beautiful. And what are you uh, – you're doing business consulting, right? Or is it – just finances like what what is it that you're offering yeah um well these days i tend to dive a bit more into like the systems behind your business so that you can empower your team to be able to work autonomously not needing you having to hold their hand or you know helicopter parent them or anything like that so to give, empower your team to be able to um do their jobs by using systems and and processes and uh, click up where you're very familiar with click up that's one of my favorite um programs that's my jam that's my jam yeah, <laughs> exactly yeah so i i help people set up they click up and and um get their systems for their teams yeah up and running fantastic well laurie i hope we could have you back on on for something even deeper in the future or or maybe not I so deep maybe to. more chill but um thank you so much <laughs> really appreciate it and then, um, yeah, let's uh, say goodbye. Bye, Lori. <laughs> so, yes, uh, thank you very much for, uh, uh, for that. And now I'd like to thank our sponsor, which is Hallucinated Studios. Hallucinated Studios is all about branding and marketing for entertainment and nightlife. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and roll the commercial. And we're going to enjoy a set by Gibbons and a VJ set by Hallucinated. Enjoy. <laughs>